Hello everybody and welcome to another of our supplier showcases. My name is Saskia and I'm the event team manager here at Heaton House Farm. This evening I will be talking to Heidi from Glorious by Heidi, who supplies beautiful accessories for brides and she is going to tell another little bit more about them. So please welcome Heidi. Hello, how are you? Hi Heidi, how are you? I'm good, thank you, yes. Um, I think I told you earlier, um, I'm a, a big Aston Villa fan and it's their first match of the season tonight. Uh, so I am missing the second half of my beloved Aston Villa's <laughs> opening match uh, to spend it with you lovely lot. So I hope, I hope you feel my love. We are very honoured, I can tell you that. <laughs> we know how important football is. <laughs> It is. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself then, Heidi. So I'm a massive Aston Villa fan. <laughs> um, I live in Cheshire. Um, uh, I'm married. I have two children. Um, I have a mad schnauzer called Boris uh, that I enjoy walking in the uh, Peak District just behind my house. Um, I met my husband, um, oh, that's me in my horse riding hat. Um, I do try and take Friday mornings off to go horse riding out in Nutsford. Um, it was something that I loved when I was growing up. And, um, when I started my family, it kind of went on the back burner. Um, so I have, uh, rekindled that love of late. So that's me in my horse riding hat, going horse riding in Nutsford on a Friday morning. Um, yeah, so met my husband at Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, we got married in uh, 1997. Um, and we were lucky enough to go traveling around the world, uh, visiting countries like India and Nepal and Bali and Australia and New Zealand. Um, so, uh, so yeah, personally, that's me. As you can see, I love horse riding. I love running. I love going to music festivals. I love winning wedding awards. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that's basically me and my home life. Um, professionally, I'm much of the same, really. Um, a lot of my uh, my influences are um, sort of music and music icons, and um, yeah, I. I I particularly connect with brides that are really into festivals and going to live gigs. So that's me. Sounds wonderful. Very busy lifestyle, which is great. So Welcome tell up. us a little bit more about how um, Glorious by Heidi began. Like, Where are you based? So based uh, in Macclesfield, Cheshire. Um, I have a studio in Macclesfield, um, which up until we went into lockdown was where I uh, met a lot of my brides uh, for bespoke consultations. Uh, so, uh, yeah, based in, in, in Macclesfield in Cheshire. Um, started Glorious by Heidi about seven years ago now. Um, and much like uh, a lot of small creative businesses, um, Glorious by Heidi started out as more of a hobby. Um, at the time, I was a um, presenter for local radio and I did the afternoon show and my show was called Local Matters uh, and it was a very serious affair and I used to interview uh, the local council, the local authority, speak to local councillors about scintillating things like planning applications um, and funding for local initiatives, their support for charities, regeneration of the town centre. Um, I did love it. I loved working in radio, but it was very full on and it was incredibly stressful um, and quite dry. If I'm honest with you, interviewing councillors is not the most exciting thing ever. Uh, and I am quite a vivacious person. Um, so I, I was missing something in my life. So when I got home from work, I very often used to just dabble at making a few little hair accessories um, and other bits of jewellery. And um, friends and family spotted what I was doing and, and would ask me if I'd make something for them for special occasions. And before I knew it, I was spending nearly all of my spare time making little pieces for friends and family. And I thought, you know what, I think I could do something with this. I think this could be a business. So I started out doing it part time. And it grew very, very quickly. Within a year, I'd done um, the big wedding show in Birmingham at the NEC. Um, and I was getting orders. And uh, yeah, before I knew it, um, 
glorious had taken over my life and the the radio presenting job had to had to go uh, and that was yeah just over seven years ago so and I've never looked back I absolutely love what I do gosh quite quite a changing career then <laughs> certainly was yeah certainly was but I I think I needed it um like I say I really enjoyed being in local radio but it's dry not very much sparkle going on lots of cord corduroy lots of beige um so yeah I'm, I'm much happier where the sparkle's at I can imagine <laughs> we like a bit of sparkle absolutely so when you're creating your um accessories do you tend to follow the latest trends how, how do you keep up with the latest trends well I like to set trends rather than follow them um but I um try to visit the big uh, bridal shows once a year so Harrogate in particular is a fantastic place to go and see what the big designers are doing what um uh, what collections they're launching um the catwalk shows are utterly inspirational um and you very much get a feel at those shows for um what is going to be big um in uh, the wedding world for that season so you will see um, a, a particular um, focus on perhaps pearl detailing or lace overlay or blush under skirts. Um, you will see um, a, a 70s kind of feel to the designs. Um, you'll see more bohemian, uh, perhaps more elegant. Um, last season, it was very much about those elegant cuts, quite simple dresses. Um, and so you're looking at um, designers like uh, Bowen Dryden and Maggie Sotero, um, Eliza Jane Howell. Um, and I spend a lot of time just going around looking at the detail in those dresses and, and seeing if there are elements that I could pull out um, and, and use in my latest collections. Because at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're accessorizing those dresses. So those dresses that you're seeing on the catwalk and then those dresses that your brides are going to be choosing to wear for their wedding day. So if I can design a collection that has got that sort of modern bohemian vibe or a kind of 70s feel, then I know that I'm going to be effectively accessorizing the dresses that my brides are going to be wearing in 2021, 2022. So that's really where I get the main thrust of my inspiration from. Um, I love the forms you find in nature, um, but I also do keep a keen eye on, on what those sort of iconic pop stars are doing um, because they're edgy and they're out there and they're doing stuff before a lot of other people are doing them. Um, and so I'm very passionate about music. I love to dance. And, um, you know, I'll be keeping an eye on Beyonce. I want to know what that girl's wearing because um, she is a trendsetter. Um, so, yeah, that music and 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 um, the, the, the stuff that, that our, our pop stars are wearing um, influences my designs as well. Brilliant. Sounds good, because I, I always think the accessories are kind of the, the cherry on top of the cake, aren't they? Once you've... Uh got the rest of your dress and that's really resorted they really finish off the look nicely absolutely, absolutely so tell us a little bit more about what sort of headwear you can provide for the brides or, or mother bride so i think i'm probably best known for my statement crowns you can see a few of them on the which way am i pointing uh, on the <laughs> on the back wall behind me um so um statement crowns i'm very well known for um oh that's olivia she's beautiful isn't she green and, and gold um uh yeah so this this the statement crowns are, are very popular uh and i mentioned those um very simple elegantly cut dresses that we saw a lot of in collections in 2020 we're probably going to be seeing those carry through to 2021 and when you have got quite a simple elegantly cut dress a statement crown really does draw the eye up through the whole look and finishes that look off. Um, so I'm very well known for the crowns. Um, I also design hair vines, hair pins, combs, um, brooch bouquets as well. I'm known for my brooch bouquets, uh, which feature upcycled um, costume jewellery. Um, I design for uh, mother of the bride, mother of the groom. I'm seeing more and more um, that um, mother of the bride, mother of the groom don't necessarily want to wear a hat. It's always been very traditional for them to wear a hat. But ladies, we know that hats flatten the hairdo. So if you've spent a lot of money having your hair done for a wedding day, popping a, a, a big hat on tends to squash all of the action down and then you take it off and things are a little bit 
bit squidged. Um, so increasingly, mother of the bride, mother of the groom are coming to me and asking me to design pieces that would complement what they're wearing for the wedding day. So it's not always just the, the bride that I'm designing for. Um, so, yeah, in those pictures, you can see a lot of different designs. Um, I used to be called Glorious Tiaras back in the day, and you guys at Heaton House Farm will remember me as Glorious Tiaras. That's what I was called when I started out. Um, and I used to design tiaras. Um, but the word tiara and the idea of a tiara um, kind of fell out of favour. People sort of perceive them to be quite old fashioned. So in my heart, I do still design tiaras, but I call them modern tiaras and they are more crown like. But that that um, design ethos is still there. The shape and the, and the type of materials that I use is still there. Brilliant. It all sounds very good. Lots of different varieties there. And I can imagine that people can also come to you um, and ask for a more bespoke piece. If they've got an idea in mind, they can speak to you directly to see if it's something that you can help them design together. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd say probably 70 percent of the business that I do is bespoke. Um, I design a lot of bespoke pieces for brides. Um, up until lockdown, I was doing a lot of face-to-face -face consultations. So brides would book in with me to come in for about an hour into the studio in Macclesfield. And we would discuss how she was planning to wear her hair. We'd look at photos of her dress and um, we would look at the uh, design elements on the bodice, for example, the cut of the dress, the general style of the dress. Uh, and I would make suggestions as to the type of accessory that would complement that. Um, have conversations around the type of accessories that, that a bride might wear day to day, because that very much gives you an idea of her personal style and the type of accessories that she would feel comfortable wearing. If a bride is really into those big statement earrings for a night out, you can guarantee that she'll be very comfortable with a statement crown. If the accessories are a little bit more pared back, um, then you're looking at a more pared back accessory. Um, so those conversations are had during a bespoke consultation and I absolutely love designing bespoke. It always stretches me. I always end up doing something different. No two designs are the same. Um, and over lockdown, I've been doing those same consultations, but I've been doing them via Zoom and that's going to stay. I want to keep the Zoom consultations. They've been so effective, so much fun. Um, it's meant that brides from further afield have been able to get in contact with me. So rather than having to be local to me so they can come and visit the Cheshire studio, I've had brides up in Edinburgh, down in Somerset all across the UK. Um, I've not had any brides from overseas yet, but I do ship overseas. So hopefully, who knows, some Zoom consultations with brides from overseas. So yes, bespoke is very much a large part of what I do. And as I said before, um, that service is provided for mothers of the groom um, uh, and mothers of the bride as well. Brilliant, that sounds great. And typically, if somebody did want a, a bespoke piece from you, what would the lead time be? So when do they need to kind of get in touch with you to start that process of uh, designing there are two elements so it takes um approximately it depends on the size of the piece of course but i always say it takes approximately six to eight weeks for me to design and make a piece for you however um during crazy season high season um uh, of, of wedding season i i'm booked up my time is booked up so I do say to brides that once they've chosen their dress, get in contact with me, start thinking about your accessories then. Um, the way I work is that I take a deposit. Um, so it's not like you've got to find, you know, find the money for your accessories up front. Um, but it is worth contacting me sooner rather than later, because as I say, during high season, um, I do get very busy. And I can only allocate a certain number of brides to, to each month. Um, so once my diary is full, um, unfortunately, I do, generally speaking, have to turn away the larger bespoke orders. I can still do rush orders. And uh, when brides contact me for smaller pieces, um, then I, I can work around um, the, the bookings that I've already got. Um, but it is much better for brides to get in contact with me once they've chosen their dress. Definitely. Never too early to start the uh, planning of the accessories. <laughs> and it's so much fun. It's, you know, it's nice to take your time. It's much nicer to take your time than sort of feel that you're rushing and you perhaps don't end up with exactly what you wanted because you're, you're rushing things. So, yeah, it's, it's much nicer to take your time over these things. Definitely. So if any ladies, you know, do leave it a little bit late, um, 
or then they don't want to go down the bespoke route can they um buy any pieces that are already made up um kind of ready-made pieces from you absolutely so my main collections are available on my website which is www.gloriousbyheidi.com um, and you can just order those pieces online um, they do still take a couple of weeks to come through uh, but it is a, a quicker and more effective way um, to get pieces at the last minute if you have left things a little bit later um, I'm also stopped in two bridal boutiques in the UK so if you are a Nottingham bride or a Cheshire bride Luckily, you will find my pieces available at Coco Bridal Boutique in Nottingham and Rock the Frock Cheshire in Bramall. Uh, and those pieces are ready to go. You go in, you try your dress on, you try a glorious accessory on, you love it, you buy it, you take it home. Simple as that. Um, so those pieces are available on my website and there are a few pieces available at Coco Bridal Boutique and at Rock the Frock Cheshire. Brilliant. Sounds nice and easy. <laughs> So we are going to be asking Heidi some more questions at the end. So if anyone does think of anything that they would like to ask her about her accessories, please feel free to pop it in the comment box below and we will quiz her on those at the very end. Um, so in terms of the accessories going alongside the dress, um, would you suggest that ladies get in touch with you before they've bought the dress or after they've bought the dress? How does it usually work? So I usually advise brides to contact me once they've chosen their dress. <clears throat> As I said, your accessory um, should really echo some of the, the, um, the elements of your dress. So if there's um, a lot of pearl detail, for example, on your bodice, a lot of crystal detail, we can bring that through in your accessory. However, brides can contact me whenever they like. Um, so if you, you know, if you spot something on my website that you absolutely fall in love with, um, I'm not going to tell you wait until you've got your dress because a lot of my pieces are very accessible pieces and um, the hair vines for example that, that one in particular the Iliana vine um, that that sort of design and that sort of style will go with most dresses but for the bespoke pieces I do recommend that you come to me once you've chosen your dress an accessory I think should draw the eye up through your whole look so you want to sort of have it as the final flourish. So if you have got um, a particular cut or particular detailing on your dress, it really is nice to pull that through into the design of your accessory because it does pull the eye all the way up. You don't want people's eye kind of stopping neck, shoulder, chin. You know, you really do want people to sweep up through your whole look on your wedding day, finish with your hair, finish with your veil, finish with your accessory. And it is that sort of focal point in your photography as well you'll notice that that the eye goes up through and it does finish with the accessory so contact me anytime you like but um, but if you are going bespoke it is nice to have the dress as the inspiration for your accessories lovely obviously we're seeing a few photographs um on in the background there so we've got sarah on tech this evening and um, so we can see a few different designs that you've that's that you've created which is lovely yeah. is that the one you've got on this evening it is yeah yeah, yeah lovely um but tell us a little bit more about kind of what materials you tend to use to create these pieces so these pieces are heirloom pieces. I want these pieces to still be around in decades. I want them to be passed through the generations. I'd love to think that a bride would pass one of my accessories on to her daughter. Um, so I do use high-end materials. So all of the wires are silver-plated wires. They are gold-plated wires. Um, I use Swarovski crystals, nothing sparkles like Swarovski. I use pearls, uh, freshwater pearls. Um, so they are high end materials. I also um, use um, upcycled pieces of jewellery. So sometimes brides will come to me and say that they've got a brooch that belonged to their grandma. Um, they've got a pair of earrings that belong to their auntie. Uh, can I use those in their accessory? Can I use those in, in one of the brooch bouquets that I design? And the answer is yes. And it's a lovely way of having people that perhaps couldn't be with you on your wedding day with you. It's a way of remembering those people. Um, probably more personal now during lockdown than, it, than it's ever been because a lot of weddings are going ahead without extended families. So if you can have people that can't be at your wedding with you through their accessories, that's a lovely thing to do. 
Definitely. I love the idea as well of passing on the accessory to your daughter. I think that'd be really lovely. It's like a family heirloom, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, so what would you say your unique selling point is then to your accessories? I would say my designs are my unique selling point. And I'm very often told uh, by uh, brides and admirers of, of the brand that they can spot my designs a mile off. So I use a lot of couture techniques in my designs, um, a lot of beading in particular. So you'll see a lot of hand beaded florals and leaves in my designs. Um, so my designs are my unique selling point. Um, and also I've been focusing um, on sustainability um, in the collection that I'm about to launch and last year's collection. Um, so as I said, it, it's lovely to think that these accessories are going to be around in generations. And a lot of the pieces I designed last year, the head pieces, can also be worn as neck pieces after your wedding day. Um, I just think it's a real shame to have spent all of that time choosing your accessories, spending money on your accessories to wear them once on your wedding day. So that particular piece that you see there, Olivia, can also be worn as a neck piece. Another of my pieces, Amina, can also be worn as a neck piece. So a number of those pieces can be worn as a statement neck piece with a little back dress, totally dresses up a, 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 a night out um, without trying too hard. So yes, yeah, sustainability is really important to me. We live in times when we really do have to be thinking about fast fashion and the longevity of the stuff that we buy. So um, sustainability is definitely a unique selling point. Well, I love that idea of using it as a necklace afterwards as well. It means you can make the most out of your accessories. <laughs> yeah. Which is always absolutely. nice. Um, so if anyone does have any questions, um, just as a quick reminder, please pop it in the um, box below and we will quiz Heidi on those at the end. So we know that you've done a few um, photo shoots here at Heaton House Farm, but have you ever been featured in any magazines or blogs? I've been very lucky to be featured in a number of magazines and blogs. Um, I was very excited recently by the fact that um, I... I've just been featured in Bridal Buyer magazine. I think it's just come out. Bridal Buyer magazine, for people that aren't familiar with it, is um, the magazine uh, that is given away at Harrogate uh, Bridal Buyers Fair once a year. But it also goes direct to all of the UK bridal boutiques, uh, also some in America and some in Europe. And there was a two page um, feature on accessories. And I think about six of my accessories are, are in that feature, which was absolutely wonderful. I am looking to um, expand the number of bridal boutiques that I stock uh, in 2021. And so for me, it just means that when I contact these boutiques, they're already familiar with me and my designs because they've seen them in Bridal Buyer magazine. Um, so that was uh, real kudos. I was, I was really, really chuffed to be featured by them. Um, and tomorrow, uh, one of the styled shoots um, that I worked on with a local photographer, Charlotte Palazzo Photography, is going to be featured on Unveiled magazine online. And I'm really excited about that because that was actually shot in the woodland behind Heaton House Farm. There it is, isn't it gorgeous? Um, so yeah, so that, um, that's gonna be in Unveiled tomorrow. Um, it was a very exciting shoot. We'd just come out of lockdown. It was the first thing that we'd done collectively as wedding professionals. Charlotte, the photographer, and I had gone down a recce at the Woodland. It was a beautiful, sunny evening, lots of dappled sunlight, the wind softly blowing through the leaves. On the day of the shoot, we had horizontal rain, gale force winds. We were hanging on to the styling elements for dear life. Uh, but you would never know looking at the photos. And I think that's testament uh, to the profession. <laughs> You'd know looking at that photo. <laughs> Um, but I do think it's testament to the professionalism of um, of the, the wedding creatives that were involved in that shoot and that are involved on people's wedding days. You know, no matter what, what the weather throws at us, what the, uh, the occasion throws at us, we really do step up to the mark and we pull something off that is absolutely beautiful. So I'm really excited to see that shoot on Unveiled tomorrow. It's an intimate woodland wedding shot in the woodland behind Heaton House Farm. It's exciting. I can't wait to see that either. It's always nice to just make the most of the weather, no matter what it may be. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So just before we finish up, then, have you got any more um, exciting news that you want to share with us? Uh, yes. Um, so I was um, supposed to have launched and um, photographed and launched my new collection in March of this year. And of course, that didn't happen. 
uh, because of lockdown. Uh, so I will be um, shooting my new collection in the next couple of weeks. So that is going to be out in October. So if brides keep a, a sharp eye on my Instagram feed and my Facebook feed and my Pinterest account, you will see a lot of those new designs coming out and hopefully they will be with you very soon in the bridal boutiques. Um, so that's really my big news is that the, uh, the new collection is imminent. I will also be reopening my studio in the next week or two. So brides can start booking in with me uh, for their uh, their bridal consultations. Another shoot shot at Heaton House Farm, that one in the barley field in the golden sunlight. So no wind and rain for that one, just gorgeous sunlight. It's a beautiful photo shoot, that one. I love that. <laughs> I just <laughs> You're also part-time model. <laughs> <laughs> that is straight from the past, yeah. <laughs> So you've actually got off quite easy tonight, Heidi, because you've not got any questions to answer other than my many questions. Um, so I'd like to say a huge thank you to you for joining us, especially, you know, giving up your football. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do hope that everyone enjoyed hearing all about the wonderful Heidi and um, her accessories. Next week, we do have the pleasure of talking to one of our musical suppliers, um, and that's the fantastic Benjamin Clark. So please join us again, and that's Monday the 28th of September at 7pm. Thank you very much for joining us, Heidi, and thank you for everyone tuning in at home. Thank you. Bye. Bye.